Hello, everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe and welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome again, and thank you so much for your support. Today, I'm excited to guide you through the ultimate data cleaning tutorial in Python, a step-by-step -step guide with Jupyter Notebook. This presentation will equip you with essential techniques to clean and prepare the data for analysis or machine learning. We'll cover everything from identifying and handling missing values, removing duplicates, and dealing with outliers to converting data types and encoding categorical variables. But that's not all. Towards the end of this video, we'll also explore simple yet impactful visualizations so you can better understand and showcase your clean data. Data cleaning is the foundation of any successful data project. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools and confidence to turn messy data sets into valuable insights. So let's dive in and start mastering the art of the data cleaning. So here I am in my Jupyter Notebook. So if you're not sure how to run Jupyter Notebook or download it, I have a video I have created step-by-step -step on how to download Anaconda to use Jupyter Notebook. Also, if you're not sure how to upload a CSV file in your Jupyter Notebook, I also created another video on a step-by-step -step on that process as well. I will link those two videos in the description below in case you need them. So in this case, we're in my Jupyter Notebook. I see, as you can see, it says sample data cleaning project.csv. So this is the CSV file I'm gonna use for this project. So if I double click on this, it will show me my data set. So very simple data set. And it's good to just go in here and look at your data set, get familiar with your data set, see what kind of information it has for you. Like in this example, I have a name, age, salary, join date, which is when the employee joined this department and the department that this employee is working at. So for example, there's Pam, 25 years old, 70,000, um, joined on January 15, 2003, or 23, and works in the HR department. It looks like there's 43 rows and five columns. So looking at that, get familiar with it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open because we're going to need this data set name when we pull it into our Jupyter Notebook. So let me go ahead and get started. So again, you just upload your file. In this case, we already have it uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new workbook. So I can create a new workbook. So click on new and Python three. So it will open up a brand new workbook. So you can name this whatever you want just by clicking this. And I will just put cleaning data and rename. So that's my new name. Again, you can call it whatever you like. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a note here. So I'm going to start off with two of the pound signs because I want my note to have bigger text. So if you just go ahead and put step one without the two pound signs, I will show you what it looks like. Load the data set. So this is my, my first step that we're going to go ahead and do but I want that note there. So instead of a code, I want it to do a markdown. So if I do a control enter, which will run the data, or you can simply click on this run button here. So either way, it works the same. So it just ran my data as a note. But again, if I want to make that text bigger, I put two little of those number signs there, control enter, and now my text gets bigger. I'm going to go ahead and add more cells. So the first thing I want to do is import my library. So I'm going to import pandas. If I can spell that right, P-A-N-D-A-S as PD. Again, control enter. So as you can see, there's a number here. It says three, so it ran successfully. Otherwise, it would give you an error message. So the first thing we are going to do is I want to load the data set. So I'm putting a note there. So, so this is going to be the code. I'm going to call it, you can name your data set whatever you want, but in this case, I'm going to call it data. You can call it DF, um, anything you want. And then I'm going to pull in my data set. So pd.read CS 
CSV. Now it's going to read my CSV file. So it's asking me, what is your CSV file name? So this is why I left it opened. So I'm going to double click up here or just click once. And I'm going to highlight it and do a control C to copy that. Go back here and then I'll do a control V to paste it. So now there's my data set name. So it's pulling the pd.readcsv is pulling this data set right here into this new workbook. So I have to also put .csv to be specific. And then now I will go ahead and run that. So now you don't see nothing, right? So but you do see a number that it ran smoothly. So now what the Jupyter notebook did is pretty much is reading your data set. So within here, I want to print my data set, which I call it data. And now I will run it again. So here you see my data set is just the same as the one that we saw earlier. So you can see there are some NA values, or NAN values. So we're going to look at those next. So again, I'm going to write another note. Step two, identify missing values, missing values. So here, if I run this, it's going to run as a code. I want it to be a markdown. And I want my text to be bigger. So I put two of those number signs, control enter. So the first thing I want to do is I want to print out some text saying missing value count. So print, we'll do a backslash n missing values count. Now, if you see this, I'm going to run this code, control enter. And now you see that my output is missing values count. But I want to actually print out my missing values for each variable. So next I will put print my data set name, which I call it data, is null, open and close, dot sum, close and close, and control enter. So now you will see my missing values count here, which I told it to say missing values count, and then my null values for each variable. So it looks like my name variable has zero missing values. My age variable has four. Salary has seven. Then it gives me my join date and department with zeros. So it looks like age and salary are the only two variables, which is here age and salary, that have those null values in them. So this is good because it gives you the actual number of null values within those variables. So how to handle these missing variables, which we will do next. This will be step three. Step three. And again, I'm going to change that to markdown, control enter. I'm going to go ahead and type up this code and then explain it to you after I type it in. This is my age variable. Equals data. So I've got fill NA in my data set name again. Variable. I'm going to copy this and put this down here. But instead of that variable, I want it to do my salary variable. So I'm going to call copy salary. Copy all that space there. And then in this case, instead of median, I'm going to do mean. Go ahead and print my data set. So print data. Now, as you can see from up here, comparing these ones, you see the NANs in your salary variable, also NANs within your 
age variable. So now they should these should be gone because we took care of those. Now also another thing I want to explain to you. So if you happen to have, uh, say we had some NA values in our join date and you just wanna drop those. You can simply go ahead and put in a code for a drop, any of those. So I'll just go ahead and show you that since it's we're in the process of handling missing values. So if there was any um, join dates that you wanna drop, you would simply just go data equals in your data set dot drop NA's subset equals. And then here is where you put your variable name. So we'll just put join underscore date. That's this variable name here. Um, so basically this is just telling it anything that's an NA value within this column, drop it. So that's how you, you would do that. So, but in this case, we don't have any N, NAs in that row, but if it did, it would drop any NAs within that column. So that's what this code is for here. So I would do a control enter and it went ahead and ran my code. But like I said, it's still 42 rows because nothing was dropped. We didn't have any NAs there. So just a little note there in case you want to learn how to drop some NAs. So in this case, we learned how to use the median, fill NAs with median and fill NAs with mean, and how to drop some NAs. Those are the three ways you can pretty much handle missing values. Now, step number four, we're gonna check and remove duplicate rows. Before checking duplicates, I want to um, identify any subtitle differences, like for example, extra spaces, uh, different encasing, or invisible characters. Um, so let's try to address these issues first. So first off, we're gonna trim white spaces. So entering this code data, which is my data set, I'm gonna go ahead and run this code. As you can see, the code ran successfully. So there's a number here, 13. So this code is basically just stripping um, any of the leading trailing spaces. So what I wanna do next is basically um, convert the text to lowercase for consistent um, comparison. So that I will do data equals data.apply. So in the, Instead of putting strip, like you can see, it's almost identical to this code here, but instead of putting strip, we're gonna put lower because we're putting these text into lower cases. Make sure there's a couple quotations. And run that. It ran smoothly. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and print out my data set because I wanna see what it did. So now as you can see, comparing this output of your data set to this one up here, you can see that there's capital letters, um, probably some spaces in there that we can't see, but this code got rid of that. It stripped all those spaces. So this code here is to convert those uppercase to lowercase. Okay, so you can see that it worked. So all of these are now lowercase. So now I'll go ahead and add more cells to continue on to writing the code. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and write the code in to remove some duplicates, but I want to go ahead and identify these by, by names. So if there's a duplicate name, I want them to go ahead and delete the rows or drop them. For example, there's Pam, she's 25. Looks like there's another one here, another Pam that's 25. So it looks like those are duplicates both in HR has, has the same higher date. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. So to do so, I write in the code data dot drop underscore 
duplicates. Now I'm going to enter in my columns, so I'm going to say name. And if you want to do more than one column, basically you just put a little comma size to separate each column. Sorry guys, it's just supposed to be single quotation mark. So single quotation, comma, single quotation, and then the variable name again, comma. And I think it would be just those two there. So let's try that. I will run that code. Looks like it went successfully. So let's see if it narrowed down my data set. So I'm going to go ahead and print data. So it looks like there's 39 now. Before there was 42. So it has dropped those duplicate values. So that's how to get rid of your duplicates um, by variable name. Also, make sure that you clean your data by getting stripping any spaces, putting them all into lower cases. So that's how to do that. Another thing you want to know in case you just want to see how many duplicates your data set has, you can go to print data duplicated dot sum. This actually gives you the sum of duplicates that you have in your data set. Data to sum. There we go. Make sure you spell duplicated right, which I didn't. So now it's basically telling you how many duplicates you have in your data set. So right now we have zero because we took care of those duplicates. Okay, so moving on to step number five, we are going to handle outliers. I'm going to change this to markdown and run this code. So we are going to handle these outliers using the IQR method. But first off, I want to just to explain to you what an outlier is in case you don't know. So an outlier is data points that are significantly different from most of the data in your data set. So they can screw analysis and lead to misleading results. So it's important to identify and handle them. And using the IQR method that we're going to be using now is a common, most efficient way to detect outliers. So the IQR method is the inner quartile range, which they call it, is a measure of variability based on dividing a data set into quartiles. So there's Q1, which is the first quartile, and then Q3 is the third quartile. So Q1 is um, below, which is like the 25% of the data that the data falls under, and then Q3 is the value below, which 75% of the data falls. So as I write this code, um, you'll understand better. I will start off with the note here saying calculate the IQR column salary. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and check to see if there's any outliers within this column here, the salary column. So if there's any outliers, we will go ahead and handle those. I'm simply writing this code, so it's going to be Q1. Actually, let me make this bigger. So Q1 equals my data set name and my salary column. Let's make sure you're spelling your columns correctly because otherwise they won't pull it. Q-U-A-N-T-I-L-E. So here I'm going to do the 25%, 0.25, and this finds the values below which 25% of the data falls, which is Q1. So now Q3, again, data, salary, Q-U-A-N-T-I-L-E, 0.75%, which finds the values below which 75% of the data falls. 
So now we're going to go ahead and put a formula, which is going to be an IQR. And I want it to do Q3 minus Q1. So if I run this code, control enter, it ran it smoothly. So I'm going to, but I'm going to go ahead and add on more to this code because I want to filter out outliers. Next, data set name. In my column, which is salary. Prior two are equal to Q1 minus 1.5 times the I you are, which is this here, grand, a data set name, and open bracket, salary, close bracket, lower two are equal to Q3, plus 1.5, times IQR. I'm going to run this code. It gives me an error message. So it's showing me that I forgot to close with a, and I can run that again. So now I want to actually print out my data. Okay, so now it went ahead and took care of those outliers within my data. See like Dan, that looks like a very large amount here. And if you can see, there is no more Dan here. So it took care of those outliers with those large, larger amounts. And you can see it has 39, but if you look at it, it says 1, 2, and then it goes to 7, 9, 10, 11, and then skips to 13, 14. So it, it does take care of those outliers for you. So now moving on, we are going to convert this data here, the join date. See how it just has a basic just date? So we're going to convert the join date column to a data time frame or format. So the reason why this is important is because data type conversions ensure that each column in your data set is in the correct format. So it's critical for performing like operations, mathematical operations um, can only be performed on numeric data um, and integers, floats, so on and so forth. And then dates must be in a date time format to calculate time differences or even if you want to like sort by date, um, it helps with that. Um, efficiency, memory usage, proper data types, you know, um, avoiding errors. So it's important just to kind of put that in a better data type. So let's convert this date, these, these dates here into a date time format. Step six, we will convert data types. Make this bigger text and change that to markdown. And this code is data, which is your data set name. Open bracket. Now I'm gonna put in my column that I wanna change this to. This is gonna be join date. So just highlight that and do a cop control C to copy and paste. So now it has a join date, that's my column name close bracket equals pd.2 date time. So it's I'm telling it to change it to date time formatting. It's your data set name. And again, your variable name, close bracket. Now I want to print my data set. So now you can see that these dates have changed to a better formatting. So they don't have the slashes anymore. Okay, so now what we will do in this next step is step seven. I want to convert categorical variables. So I'm gonna encode it 
So what I mean by that is like, see, for example, like this department here variable. Um, so encoding the department column using one hot encoding, uh, categorical variables are columns that contain categories or labels, like for example, such as department. So these are categories, right? So HR department, finance, there's IT department. So in this case, um, these variables cannot be directly used in numerical models for like, you know, numbers. So that's why we have to encode these to um, numerical. So why do we encode categorical variables? Because for most machine learning models and statistical tools, they work with numerical data. So it's always one or zeros, right? So enco encoding um, converts categoricals into a numerical format without losing the information they represent. So for example, the department column, which is this one here, um, and this data set has categories like HR finance. So encoding these ones here in this department um, column, it will allow us to represent these categoricals into numerical data. So, and to do that, we will go ahead and enter in a specific code and um, add a column for department HR and department IT, so which I will show you in this next step. So step number seven, we will encode categorical variables. So we will use the one hot encode for the department column. Your data set name, data pd.get underscore dummies. Next I will convert only the one hot encoded columns to integers. Next, I will print my data. I'm not sure what's going on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my kernel. So I'm going to go to kernel, restart kernel, and run all cells. And there we go. Sometimes it just has to reset itself. So as you can see here, as um, I scroll up to step six, when I printed my data, it just has department HR, um, IT, you know, finance. But when we change those, now you can see that department HR is ones and zeros. So meaning that the zeros are basically employees that are not, so Jane, she is not a department HR, and she's not in the department of IT. So where, where would that leave her then, right? So she's in finance. So um, that's what that means. So Pam is an HR. Alice is an HR. And you can see there's some IT. Bob is in, in IT. So that's how those are now identified. Now that we changed those categories into numerical data, now we can go ahead and save the data set. So step nine, save the data set. So I'll go ahead and add some more cells here. So to save this to a CSV file, simply just put in your data set name and then put dot two underscore CSV 
and then name it whatever you want with double quotation. So in this case, I'm going to call it cleaned data dot csv comma index equals false. So go ahead and run that. So you don't see anything happen, but you do see that it ran successfully because it saved it to your Jupyter Notebook uh, file location. So if you go into your file locations in Jupyter Notebook, you will see now that there's called cleaned underscore data dot CSV. So that is your clean version of your data. So coming back here, now you are done with cleaning up your whole data set. So now, if you want to, you can go ahead and start off with visualizations. So um, I will go ahead and put a caption here for visualizations. So this next step, since I walked you through step by step on typing in this code to clean your data, what I will do now is basically just do a copy and paste some code in here for um, visualizations. First thing you want to do with your visualizations is you want to import your clean data set now. Okay, so first I'm going to put in my libraries. It's going to be import matplotlib.py plot as plt. So this is my library I'm going to use. Next I want to load my data set. So I'm going to call it again data equals pd dot read underscore csv. Now I want it to read my clean data set. So clean underscore data dot csv. And then I want it to go ahead and display the first few rows of the data set just to make sure that I have the correct data set, right? So print data dot head. And I'm going to control enter. And there we go. So we imported our cleaned version of our data set. And we printed out these first columns here. So here it is. It's exactly what we did before by cleaning up all your data. So next I can go ahead and start my visualizations. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a visualization of a bar chart for departments variable. Let's make that bigger text. And I am going to copy and paste the code in here to make it a lot quicker. So here is your department's count, which is what I'm going to call it. And I'm pulling the data set. So the data department HR and the department IT. So I am pulling these two variables into the bar graph. So then I'm Basically, this is my code going on forward for um, creating my bar graph. And then I want to go ahead and show my bar graph. So I'm going to run this code. You can see there's department distribution. This is what we called it here, department distribution. Now your X label is your department. So this is your X axis here. From right to left, that's your department, HR and IT. And then here, your Y label is number of employees. So these are your number of employees. It's going up and down here. So this is your labels of HR and IT, which are down here, HR and IT. So that is your bar graph. So you can see there's more HR employees than your IT employees. Okay, so next we can go ahead and look at um, another bar graph. Well, let's do a histogram. 
sorry. So a histogram. for salaries. And again, I'm going to copy and paste. So here is our figure size. I do an eight and six. We're pulling in these two variables, which is this, I'm sorry, eight and six. And we are pulling in this variable salary from our data set name, salary. And then these are our titles. So salary distribution, salary frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. See, salary distribution is this right here. X label is salary right here. So you can see there are more people getting paid under 70,000, fewer people getting paid over 110,000 or 120,000. It's a very cool, right? So the next, we will go ahead and do a line, like a plot for age and salary. So let's do a line plot for age and salary. Again, I'm going to copy paste this. It will take me forever to type it up. So show. And again, again, so we're pulling our data set name, and these are our two variables. And then from here down is our labels within our plots. So I'm going to control enter. Salary versus age, which is our title. X axis is age and salary is our y axis. So here's our y axis salary and x axis is age. So you can see 35. You can see the line plot there. 25 year olds. Seems like a big, a lot more of this age range right here gets paid lower and this age range gets paid a little higher. So our last one, let's add another cell here, is going to be a scatter plot for salary and department. And I will run this code. So again, it's just the, fig the figure size your colors, and this is your variable department HR. Your data set name, and these are your two variables, salary and age. And then from here down is your labels on your graph. And then here is to show your plot. So X axis is salary. Y axis is age, and here is your scatter plot. I hope this video is very helpful for you on achieving your data analysis. So, if you want to support my channel, please like and subscribe. Also, if you want to buy me a coffee, I have that link in the description below. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.